Hi, I'm Dr. Tom Anderson. Welcome to the Marine Talk Show. We're so glad you're here. My lovely wife is here with me, Dr. Marine, and we have guests with us this yeah. morning. We're so excited about Len Mink and, and Kathy Mink that are here with us. They are worship leaders for Kenneth Copeland Ministry for over 40 years, and we're here to just talk to them and let them share some of the things about their life. They have an awesome television show that's on TCV. Yes, DCT. DCT and uh, also a few other stations. And so we welcome you. It's good to have you with Thank us. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Uh, it is and a joy to be with you. Good. Thank you. Well, tell us a little bit about your life and about your show and about your ministry. Well, we are just, number one, so happy to be with you, like we said. And I always start out our story, say a funny thing happened on the way to hell. We were saved. That's right. <laughs> That's Jesus. exactly what happened. <laughs> Kathy and I. I know we, that feeling. We met uh, in very similar uh ladder climbing in our professions uh, and uh, I was in show business as a singer and entertainer and Kathy was a professional model in New York I saw her in Seventeen magazine for some That's Everlade interesting Isaac. that you saw her in a magazine before you met her. I know it was at a barber yeah. shop where they had <laughs> yeah, they yeah, yeah, yeah. girls and guys. Okay. And I was looking through, of course, all the pretty girls in the Seventeen magazine. Here she was, and I thought, wow, that's really my uh, preference. And Cup a wonderful of tea, right woman. there. Oh, I'm telling you. <laughs> and uh, so <laughs> it's funny. I was emceeing a fashion show, guys. Mm -hmm. Uh, with New York models, and here she comes down the runway. I said, that's the girl I've been seeing in the magazines everywhere, all the ads and everything. And so being Mr. Egotistical Entertainer that I was, I, you know, never had a shyness problem. I asked her for a phone number. I lost it, and then another time I saw her, <laughs> and I said, look, I lost your number. <laughs> Could I please have it again? And she was kind enough to, she should have slapped me. Yeah, exactly. But you never called, what's the and deal? we began to date each other. Uh, long story short, we began to try to love each other from self-manufactured Hollywood type of love. Mm -hmm. And uh, it didn't work. We didn't have the Lord in our relationship. Now here's Kathy. <laughs> That's a learning process, though, understanding well, that the natural love does not hold marriages together. No. People need to understand that natural love doesn't. Many times is what draws us together, gets us started in the right direction, but the, only the love of God has the power, it's unconditional, and it never fails. Right. So receiving the love of God to operate through us and in our relationship can make a marriage last a lifetime. Amen. That's right, because it wasn't until we both put Jesus first, finally, and receive the Lord as Savior, then we were able to love each other from the love of God. Yeah. And he poured into Len and he poured into me and then that love came out you know, to each other. It was so simple once we found Jesus. Amen. <laughs> well, it doesn't sound like the Hollywood thing, but I, you know, Kathy would say Jesus is first and Len, you're second. Mm -hmm. And I had to say the same thing That's because right. seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things will be added unto you. He's first, she's second, I'm second, and then we were free to receive his love, pouring it through us to each other. I tried to get what I was missing in my life mm -hmm. out of her, and of vice course. versa, and it, we were like two old dry sponges out on the Sahara Desert. We just, you know. Isn't that an interesting thing is that we seem to expect our spouse to meet our needs. Yeah. God is the need meter overall. I mean, we work to bless and encourage and meet need, uh, provide, protect. I understand that. But actually, the sense of meeting complete the need, only, the Lord only Lord. Jesus can That's meet right. the oh, need absolutely. Absolutely. in our lives. And then we set each life. other free. That's right. Well, That's we it. are not expecting them to be Jesus in our life. That's so right. Let Jesus be Jesus, and then that what God gives us, we give to them. That's a little hard for me, not being number one, but I did, I did overcome. Yes, I have to go work it out in prayer about every Once days. in a while, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Remember me, I'm the one. But Kathy has been such a great, wonderful, understanding, and flexible best friend and mate and mother and wife and grandmother and everything. It's just, I mean, th this God type of love grows with such an intensity and it becomes more and more like a fine wine it becomes more and more concentrated over time yeah. and uh it, it the bond that we have now after uh, 
<laughs> years of marriage <laughs> is just absolutely unbreakable. It's wonderful. We just had That's our right. 50th wedding anniversary. Good for you. Congratulations. Congratulations. We're getting close. Getting We're getting close. close. Yeah. We're getting close to that. But you do find that, that the love of God, you realize that he that finds a good wife has, re yes. has received favor from the Lord. Yes. Amen. And you see that, that God put that favor in your life. Yeah. That's right. Wow. You know, when there, I told you um, a little earlier when we were talking that one young man the Holy Spirit used at a secular television station in Cincinnati, Ohio, where Lynn was working. He had the Lynn Make show. There was the Nick Clooney show. One person at that station was saved. And that young man influenced all of us because he had a peace. He had a joy we didn't have. Mm. And so what a light he was. And even though he was behind the camera person, we all wanted to be like him. And he would tell us, it's Jesus. Jesus. It's Jesus. Not religion, but, but Jesus. Isn't that interesting? I mean, people out there really need to understand wherever they're at, wherever they're working, whatever menial or whatever job they feel like they're less than or what, you're a light. And That's right. You just influence and affect people because of Christ in you. And be amazed if you let that come out of you, how many lives you'll change. That's every, right. Every person is a, uh, well, they said it in the archaic old King James Version of we're all epistles or open books read of all men. Yeah. Yeah. But nowadays you would say you emit, when you're a Christian, you emit divine frequencies and don't even know it sometimes. Energy just coming out Absolutely of you, Absolutely subatomic particles uh, coming out everywhere. He talks my language. Huh? Amen. <laughs> <laughs> We're, it's quantum faith. It's what it, it is. It really is. Quantum physics and faith are basically the same language base. They operate and, as the... uh, You really are a transmitter. And did you ever walk into a room and you go, ooh, harsh words were spoken here. You, you can feel it. You feel it. Oh, you, yeah. you sense it. It's hanging in the air. Or you could walk into a home or someplace else and you go, do you feel the love? We've go. said that to each other. Do you feel the love? And you yes. Can. yes. There you is can. There's the God kind of agape love here. And uh, it really is. We, we really do have phenomenally powerful influence over our atmosphere, over our bailiwick, over our job arena, over our relationships. God has put us in situations and we want it to be easy but God has said if you'll just let me do things my way do it according to, to the divine frequencies of my word that's right then uh, I'll take care of battlefield promotion I mean it, it reminds me of Napoleon looking at his troops on his white horse and his horse started kicking and bucking and a face plant for the general would not be a good thing in front of all mm -hmm. the troops so uh, what to do everybody was afraid to move except one little farm boy he was raised on a farm with animals. He knew what to do. He laid his whole life down when he put his musket down, went out, grabbed the bit and the halter of the horse, and calmed the horse down, saving the day for the, the general. And the general said to this young, newly graduated buck private, thank you, Captain. <laughs> and they brought a horse out for that young man, and he rode in review from then on for years with Napoleon Bonaparte. Yes. Now, God is do. if we will just realize, like you guys say, about who we are in the marketplace, yeah. Thank who you. we are in church, strange, isn't it? Who we are in church, who we are in our family, in our marriage. God is doing battlefield promotions these days. I'm talking uh, uh, people's opinion of, yes. of you, your, your image. And hopefully if they see you, they see Jesus like the Father can be seen by looking at Jesus. Jesus and the Father hopefully can be seen by looking at us. And uh, it's just a marvelous time to be a believer. Well, and that really was is. so true at, the, at that TV station because it wasn't a Christian station. And yet this one, one young man influenced so much. And so many funny things happened there because he allowed the Holy Spirit to just move throughout that station. He didn't go around preaching. He just he let didn't. the light no. shine. He was so quiet. 
He was a shy, quiet person, but he would have a little New Testament here, and he would pull it out and answer a question with the scripture. I remember hearing the receptionist, you know, the Lord gets two birds with one stone and many more. <laughs> I was walking past him in the hallway, mm -hmm. and I heard her say, but I, I believe there's a God. And he read her that scripture in James that says, even the devils believe and tremble, but they're not on God's side. They're not born again. So what did you think when he when That he hit that? me like a ton of bricks, Maureen. <laughs> I thought, oh, the Lord's after me because I knew what the gospel was. I'd been running. And, and well, it people is. would yeah. come and visit our television show and be guests on the show. I was on my own show, but then I, I was on a daytime live program as well. Uh, called the Nick Clooney Show. Many of our viewers will remember that in the Cincinnati area. And uh, this is Rosemary Clooney's, Clooney's brother, brother and George Clooney's dad. So we had a show together and all these people would come. Well, Arthur Blessett had just yeah. started his cross-carrying ministry around the world and he came through Cincinnati. He'd be, been out about a year or two. And he came to that television mm -hmm. studio and uh, it was my job after he did the interview with Nick Clooney. He was the uh, the guest, and he was had all his friends of Jesus hippies there, you know, and all their oh, letters yeah, and everything yeah, back yeah, in yeah, yeah. the early 70s, <laughs> late 60s. And, uh, and uh, I, it was my job to take him out through the darkened news studio, through the prop room out to the parking lot, where his friends of Jesus psychedelic flowers and crosses <laughs> and Jesus loves you. you. Remember Volkswagen those days? van was yes. waiting. Yes. And... Uh, I said, well, Arthur, thank you so much for being with us, you know, back in the back corner, trying to get rid of him. And he said, well, thank you. Thank you, Lynn. Thanks for having us today. And he fell on his knee and wouldn't let go of my hand and bowed his head, long hair, hippie clothes and all. And he said, Father, save Lynn. Get him, Lord, in Jesus' name. And he got up and said, see ya. And talk, got in his uh, Friends of Jesus Volkswagen camper and took yeah, off. Yeah, 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 yeah. And he and I are best friends now, and we tell this story all over the world. That's a wonderful, <laughs> wonderful story. It is. Story. And, and Lynn came running to my desk and said, that man prayed for me out loud. <laughs> <laughs> Never heard anything like that well, in the Methodist I church. In the, no. <laughs> I was raised in the first church of the Frigidaire. There you go. Nobody but the pastor ever prayed out loud. And they didn't tell you. I mean, and he was reading it. And he was and reading it. And he was reading it. <laughs> they, yeah. they, didn't, they, they didn't burn a cross on the lawn. They burned a question mark. You know, they didn't have the Ten Commandments. They had the Ten Suggestions. You yep. know, it was just not a good thing. Yeah, and so I didn't even know enough to get born again. So did, awesome. were you saved then when he prayed that? Or, or were no, you? He didn't no it was yet. about two weeks after that oh. yeah. that I gave my heart to the Lord. And just a few days after that, Kathy had given her heart to the Lord in a hamburger stand with this associate producer at the television studio. And she came the next day and knocked on my door. And I went to the back door. But what I haven't told you guys is that I was sitting on the side of my bed with a loaded shotgun. And the barrels right here, mm -hmm. and my no. thumb. I threw the safety off. Elsie Smith, 20 gauge shotgun. You and I know that. Yep, guns. we know that gun. And I had my thumb on the trigger, 24 years old. You know, I would go out on the Tonight Show and sing my songs, and Johnny Carson would clap and have me back in two weeks, sit me down on the couch. Merv Griffin, Mike Douglas, Steve Allen, all these shows. I would do these, and yet when I would get back to my room and close the door and sit on the side of the bed, wherever I was, in New York or L.A. or wherever, doing these shows. Uh, I remember turning on the TV, and Peggy Lee was singing her last big hit, Is That All There Is? Is That All There Is? And I thought, oh, that is yeah. my story. Why don't I feel fulfilled doing all this television Completely stuff? Completely empty. Because I, the CBS world offers nothing. CBS had just offered me my own network show, and I just finished the pilot for it, and I'd go back and close the door and go, why isn't this making me happy? I mean... We could fill in the blanks, all the stupid you things know, we do true. to try to make ourselves it's happy. It's empty. And it's empty. And Jesus is the only person, the only relationship that can make a person happy. So, and I, I was sitting there ready to well, kill myself, yeah, and I heard a uh, knock on the door. And I had just prayed, God, help me. And his presence just burst into that room. I put the gun down, and I said, I'm not leaving here until I hear from you. 30 minutes later, I heard the knock on the door, went to the back door. I hadn't seen her in 10 weeks. We were broken up. 
and it was Kathy at the back door with her little mini skirt and a smile on her face, tears in her eyes, and an Arthur Blessed multicolored psychedelic New Testament in her hand. And she said, Lynn, I found what we've been looking for. I said, what do you mean? She said, I found what we've been looking for. I said, what? She said, Jesus. I said, where what? was Jesus? She said, at Barney's Hamburger Stand at 1.30 this morning. He was I said, there. what was he doing there? He she said, saving me. And those tears just Hallelujah. exploded. I mean, we have the story after story after story of miracles like that. That's just, so beautiful. That was the big first miracle. That's a really beautiful. Well, we need to take a break. We do. We're going to be back in just a few minutes to continue talking. So hang on. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Hi, I'd like to share with you today this book called God's Grace Fuse My Passion. This is a real good book by Dr. Moraine, and she's really poured her heart into it to reveal the heart of God. And it talks about grace, uh, God's ability to do for us what we can't do for ourselves. When there's no condemnation, you can do anything. And that's where the power of God's grace fuels your passion and his love just overwhelms you and you'll be able to do great things. Have a great day. Welcome back. We're going to continue on. I've dried up my eyes and we're ready to continue uh, talking to Len and Kathy Mink. And we're just glad that you stayed with us. So continue a little bit more. I, I love the story of your salvation at the hamburger stand. And then you, just a couple weeks later, as she comes and testifies again, that's that yes. whole energy of light that you yes. were talking about earlier. It actually emits out of us, not based on our behavior. So many people want to associate it with being some sort of perfection. No. But when we have Christ in us, he is the light of the world. Well, if he's the light of the world, obviously it has to come out of us to be in the world. And you don't have to be some perfect angelic person. There Thank was you. only one perfect person. And he's, he went to the cross, went to the grave, went to hell, kicked the devil's backside, rose again with the death, hell, and keys, <coughs> and gave uh, us death, life. hell, and grave keys in his hand and gave them to us and ascended to the Father. That's right. And is interceding for us now. I mean, it's, wow. it's a supernatural thing. Wow, but, what but, a life-changing oh, experience. It, it was had. wild. But and you, how God was right there. I'm sorry, no, go right ahead. there yeah. at your moment. Yes. Instantly. Instantly, right at the moment. Yes. You know Gary Paxton, the guy that wrote the, know, the old tune, God. Alley Oop, and oh. all those fun songs. Uh, he became a Christian, and uh, he, he, he talks about the uh, amazing, amazing joy uh, of knowing the Lord. Oh. And, uh, and about God. that song that he wrote, he was there all the time, yeah. waiting patiently. He in wrote that one? Line. Yes, he he, he wrote that one oh as well. My oh my gosh. I mean, he's well, just, I liked Elliot. The Lord is just good. instantly. Yeah, me too. <laughs> we, used, <laughs> we used to see it in the funny papers all the time, Ali Oop. That's right. That's yeah. right. You have to go back a long way. Now, what did you think Alley. when he well, told you about the shotgun and everything? I just knew he was ready. He was close to yeah. receiving the You were sent the by Lord. the Spirit of God at that yes. moment. moment. That yes. Time. Saved his life. Yeah. It's about and right place, right time in life sometimes. It's amazing the movement of the Holy Spirit and the supernatural powerful things that go on. Can't you look back at your life and see the segments that led you to that point? Yes. Yes. Uh, we, we can see how God just was directing us along this very unusual path until he well, finally gets us where and he you, wants us. You don't know ahead of time a lot of times. It's a, remember the connect the dots puzzles when we were children? Yeah. And we would connect one, connect it. That's the Christian walk. It is. You, you connect the first dot. You go to the first dot. You get born again. Okay, Jesus, take over. What do I do now? All right. He'll tell you. Then you go to the second dot. Don't take by force what God wants to give you by grace. Don't try to connect the dots ahead of time. Or you'll get some Picasso-looking weird piece of art, and your life won't make sense, and you'll fall into the ditch somewhere. So if we just take that one step at a time and connect the dots and be happy with the progress that he's giving us, right. it's, it's going to be a beautiful work of art. That's that's the an the answer us. of that is right in the scriptures, but we never really understood it until we're on the other end looking back. But he said, I'll be a light onto your path and a lamp onto your feet, which means that he show you your feet, and a lamp will just show out about 10 feet. Yep. Yes. He doesn't show you the light at the end of the tunnel. Yeah, that's you just, right. You just keep going where you can, little at a time. And I mean, I never aspired to be a pastor, never aspired we to build a church. We didn't know where we were going to be. 
We just wanted Jesus. Had no, at all. Yeah, we just followed Jesus. I told the yes. Lord, really, all, actually, I had an experience at eight years old that I, I don't know what it was or whether it was God. It happened inside of me and said, make a difference for having lived. Mm. I thought, what does that mean to an eight year old? I had no idea, it's but something. it rang so loud mm. that it stayed with me. Mm. And then when we got born again, I told the Lord, I'll do whatever you put in front of me to do. Uh, yeah. Clean toilets, sweep the floors, whatever, the mm -hmm. church, do whatever. That's you know, As long as you do that. <laughs> but you know, as long as you do that, he can lead you. Yes. And that's the, word, the first word he gave me, which is a very say. important word, since I had no boundaries in my life from the time I was eight or whatever. He said, trust in the Lord with all of your heart, lean not on your own understanding in all your ways. Acknowledge me and I will direct your path. That was audible, aloud, woke me up. I woke her up. I said, did you hear that? She said, no, go back to sleep. <laughs> but when you hear the audible voice of God, I mean, you, I have had to go back to that scripture because I have, I can. I've always had that attitude, I can, but I got to get it where I can in Christ. Yes. Because and that's was, what he was trying to get to He made his me. own decisions yes. in life. So once he got born again, the Lord said, now you have to let me show you that yes. my decisions for you. Yes. So it's, it's jerked me back many times. Well, one thing we found out is that the devil drives people. Oh. But the Lord, by his Holy mm -hmm. Spirit and his word, leads, leads people. people. He's a shepherd. Come yeah. on. Yeah. He's not, a, he's not a, a, a mule driver. He's a shepherd. Yeah. He, he pulls you along with his love and says, come over here. And here's where the still water is here. Here's where well, the green true. grass is. That's the truth. That's exactly it. Because the world is hell-bent hell on mm. destruction. Absolutely. I mean, it's, everything that you do in the world is, leads you to destroy the flesh in some fashion or some That's way. That's right. Yeah. But in Christ, it's to redeem the spirit and the soul and lead the flesh to 120 years. Amen. If we don't eat too many Twinkies. That's right. <laughs> Kathy, bring yeah, us up to the present date and what the Lord's done well, for us I, through the years. Well, the I wanted to show. say that that night, though, that I was born again, I knew one scripture from Sunday school years before that, and it came floating right across my spirit. Oh. And it was Matthew 6, 33. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. All the things we had struggled and mm. tried to get. He was saying, if you just put me first like you just did, yeah. they'll all be added to you. And they have been. Oh. They have been. Every desire of our heart. We always wanted to travel. We travel so much, it's <laughs> wild. <laughs> oh, that wonderful. I know. It is. It yeah. is. We're but, at 7 million miles in 58 countries right now as we sit I here. Love it. Wow. And then the Lord was so gracious to give us a television program, a lot like this one. And we just are able to teach the word and lead people to the Lord. Throw the net out at the end and teach the strong word of faith that will set people free. And we're on DirecTV channel 377, five days a week. Uh, and we're on the TCT, TCT, like Total Christian Television. Yeah, right, right. The TCT network. You can also find us by demand at tct.tv, Lennon Cat. Write it down. Right, <laughs> right. Make sure you listen in. And, you know, the very first time that I saw you, uh, this is the comment I made to Maureen, I said, they have a similar relationship that we do. It's a very close, we tight, do. passionate, yeah. loving, hard to describe. Not many people seem to achieve it. But I said, I could see it. In well, the, in the all relationship. glory to God. Yes. All glory to God. He's it's comes, rare, isn't it? It comes across that way. I just wanted you to know Thank that you. it came Thank across. Because yeah. sometimes people think, you know, we we got to be faking this relationship. You know? <laughs> this is, we're, we're best but friends. You know, we're ever, but you ahead. know, it's because when you join the kingdom life and you receive what Christ has already done, he, man he makes that the relationship. He does. Yeah. He does it. And it's so important how great he did. Yeah. So you just have to let him do it. Yeah. And it's what great. What do you call it? PD, PDF? PD, what, what is it you call that? Yeah, I, I, right now, let me see. That's PD, whatever. Yeah. I said I got that P when she was P 15, P and I, it's never left. It's a chemical Amen. that our body releases. <coughs> yes, yes. But in the Holy Ghost, it's... I said I've been chasing her for 55 yes. years. 
<laughs> makes you you know feel that passion for one another. Yes. But yes. that's the thing that connected to him. He just releases that into yeah. our lives. What happens with with people in their lives? They have relationships after one after another, and and they're searching. They're looking. And uh, God has put bonding mechanisms in each one of his children, mm -hmm. each created being. And uh, it's like an adhesive. If you take a piece of scotch tape and it's gooey right off of the, the reel and you stick it somewhere and you go, okay, now then you pull, pull it up and you stick it somewhere else. Every time you take it off and re-stick it, it has less sticky to it. It has less adhesive, less ability to bond. And where most people are, they've had relationship after relationship, uh, uh, emotional, sexual, every kind of relationship. And by the time Mr. Right or Miss Right comes along, they have no bonding mechanism left. Stick. But Nothing Jesus restores that. That's exactly right. Jesus yes, restores that. Yes, yes he, he does. He takes promiscuity and weirdness and makes it like you've never sinned. He will give the heart of a harlot Listen out there. a heart of a virgin. That's right. That's right. I'm telling you, it's supernatural. I totally, right. totally agree with that. We need to <laughs> see you next time. We need to take a moment. If you've never received Christ as Lord and Savior, this has been so much fun. Uh, I'd love to do another show. But anyway, uh, if you've never received Jesus as your Lord and Savior, I want to give you an opportunity to receive him right now. Please pray this prayer with us. Uh, you can change your destiny just this quickly by agreeing and receiving Christ in your life is the most important decision you'll ever make on the face of this earth. Try it. I tried it at 27, changed my whole life. Didn't make me religious, just brought me into truth. Yes. Repeat after me. Dear Father God, Dear Father Father God, God I ask you to forgive me ask you to forgive of me. all of my sin. All of my sin. I ask you, dear Jesus, ask you, dear Jesus, come into my heart. Come into my heart. Come into my life. Come into my life. Be my Lord. Be my Lord. And my Savior. And my Savior. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. And if you prayed that prayer for the first time, I'm going to tell you what, you're not going to be the same tomorrow. Look out for something good is about to happen in your life. And I want to encourage you to call in. The number's on the bottom. Let us know what God has done in your life. Stay in touch with us. Stay in tune to Maureen's talk show, and we'll see you next time. God bless you. You teach the life-changing Word of God with her to millions of people around the globe. You make a difference in the world in your lifetime. Sign up today. Go to the website or call in now. Let's change the world we live in for Jesus in our lifetime.